mandate achieved. The mandating process has been a mission, spanning some 18 months and covering off a series of draft mandate documents, advertising, consultations, submissions, and meetings. It was a lengthy and time-consuming process. However, after meeting with Minister Little towards the end of the process, we were confident that we had done all we could to achieve success. Minister Little and Minister Jackson finally confirmed our mandate in March 2021 to negotiate the settlement of claims for Mōkai Party and Utumu. It was in fact to be the first of several milestones reached during the year. I turn now to terms of negotiation. During a small ceremony at Parliament in September, the Mōkai Party Waitangi Claims Trust and Iwi Runanga leadership signed the Crown Ex Expectations and Matters for Agreement, otherwise known as the Terms of Negotiation. This is a non-binding agreement setting out the ground rules for negotiation between the Crown and the four iwi of Ngāi Te Ohuake, Ngāti Hauiti, Ngāti Fiti Kaupeka, and Ngāti Tamakopiri. The Trust spent a number of months working on the draft terms, engaging with our iwi runanga and gaining their support for the agreement. The signing ceremony was attended by a small delegation representing our four iwi of Mōkau Pātia, Nui Tonu, with a number of attendees being restricted due to COVID-19. This was very disappointing as our intention was to have significant support from our whānau in attendance. In attendance. However, health and well-being of the Fado was our main priority. And now I turn to the Waitangi Tribunal hearings. The Waitangi Tribunal hearings have finally drawn to a close with the last being heard in September in Wellington. It signaled the end of a huge and historic process of 18 hearings that are held over a six year period. While it's a relief that they are finished, they end with a tinge of frustration that we weren't able to fully take part in the final hearing due to COVID-19 restrictions, which limited numbers who could attend. The tribunal will now deliberate and provide its reports and recommendations. Reports from the tribunal take ages to complete. However, the tribunal intends to fast track the landlocked lands report. One of the main reasons why we went through the tribunal process was to tell our story and place on record our grievances and injustices suffered at the hands of the Crown. Another objective has been to seek concessions from the Crown prior to the tribunal's report. This will be helpful in the negotiations process. The support we received from our whānau, hapu, iwi, marae and advisors has been remarkable, especially given the ongoing process of iwi development. Negotiations team appointed. In November, the Trust announced the appointment of the negotiating team, namely Che Wilson, Tracy Hiroa, Richard Stedman and Tama Pōtaka. Their appointment follows a rigorous and robust process involving all four iwi runanga. The negotiators have various Mōkai Party iwi affiliations and collectively they bring a formidable range of experience and skills to the negotiations table. This includes previous treaty settlement negotiations, iwi chair and pōārahi roles, directorships, political and management roles with local, regional and central government bodies. Importantly, the expertise includes Mōkai Pātia Mātauranga, historical and contemporary knowledge, commercial negotiations, investment fund management, legal and governance frameworks, and commentators on Māori development and Māori legal issues. 
The negotiators have commenced their mahi already with the aim to achieve an agreement of principle, AIP, for the Mōkai Pātia climate community with the Crown over the next 18 months. The negotiators are responsible for negotiating the best redress and comprehensive settlement for Mōkai Pātia historical treaty of Waitangi claims. That is their sole objective at present. I now turn to the Tumu Mōkai activities. As required by the trust deed, the trust confirms that the Tumu Mōkai position, uh, which was held by Hemi Biddle, um, reports on the activities at the AGM. Um, the Tumu Mōkai position is a full trustee position of the Mōkai Party Waitangi Claims Trust. The trust is appreciative of the time that Hemi gave to this role, which included um, attendance at the Waitangi Tribunal hearings, representing the trust on the pai pai of, uh, of porphyry related to the hearings and claims related hui, and attending and actively contributing to the trust governance committee meetings and subcommittees that he was involved with. Finally, I would like to acknowledge all our Fano, our Iwirunanga, our Marae, our trustees who have supported the claims process over this busy year. The mahi we have done has laid us laid strong foundations upon which our negotiators can do their job and take us through the next phase of the settlement. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the ongoing support of our loan partners um, who have continued to support us through their loan agreements um, inclusive um, of the Aurangi Awarua Trust, the, uh, the uh, Ōwhāko B&D Trust, uh, Kaupeka Kirunga Trust, um, who else we got here? Uh, as well as Kai Aurangi Trust and Whakauai Research Services. Their support has been and continues to be much appreciated. Noreira, nga mihi atu kia koutou kia tātou katoa, mahi ate mai. Kia ora uruku. Noreira. Thank you. Um, that's the Chair's report. I will, can I have a move and a second that the Chair's report be received? You have Hari and Maraya. Thank you. I'll take that as carried. Um, once again, in this situation, it's, this is an opportunity for us for the Trust to report back. If there are other, if there are, are um, discussions, we can leave that to other fora, such as, such as our court our quarterly hui arohi. Right, thank you. Right, just going back to our agenda. Forgive it, thank you. So the next item on our agenda is the annual report. So I'll pass it over to you, Lavinia. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, just had to stop sharing so I could put my mic back on one moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so just to give you an update, Utaku has already been through this, but that's a list of the trustees um, for the annual uh, year that we've just finished. Um, and the list of the uh, program team, management team, um, that support uh, all of the mahi that is occurring for the Claims Trust at the moment. Um, we've just had the Chair's report, um, and so I'm going to just touch a little bit on the annual report. Um, just a reminder to everybody that uh, really this is our compliance uh, to feedback to you as according to our trust deed and as also according to our funding agreements that we have. Um, so it's part of the governance process and reporting back to the stakeholders. Um, the two key pieces of work that the Trust is involved in and reports on is the uh, hearings under the Waitangi Tribunal path and also direct negotiations directly with Te Arafiti. Um, Uriku touched in his report the um, hearings program that we've been through, um, a long period of hearings. I've highlighted in yellow um, the hearings that uh, we are financially reporting to you on in this this uh, AGM. We have been behind in our audit process with COVID for the last couple of years. So the audited accounts that we're presenting are actually for the year ended September 2020. So the expenses and income that we're reporting on that um, Moira will take you through actually relate to uh, 1 October 2019 through to 30 September 2020 and I've highlighted those areas in the um, hearings program there in yellow. If we look at the double path that we are taking, and put them side by side. Um, on the left hand side there is the tribunal pathway and on the right hand side is the direct settlement pathway. So we started developing the uh, direct settlement work in 2016 and 2017. And again, highlighted in yellow is the key pieces of work the expenditure and income relates to in this annual report. Our tuna, we have now gone past the terms of negotiation and are in the agreement of principle phase. Those of you who attend the Hui Arohi will be familiar with our tuna. Um, in terms of the uh, compliance requirements for the financial year ended September 2020, your trust board met eight times. Uh, they set an annual plan and a budget for that financial year. They did a strategic plan review. We had four hui arohe during that time and reported on the um, contract, operational contract we had with Crown Forest Rental Trust for the main part of the funding arrangement. And this year, uh, in this reporting period 2019 to 2020 we really tried to increase our engagement through social media um, and so it was really pleasing to see our social media engagement growing over that period with 34 social media posts and just to give you some idea when we started that process we would only generally get 10s or 20, you know, if we're lucky, 50 people engaged on social media stuff um, to the end of this, that period, we, I think at the most, we were sort of having 3,000 people uh, engaged in social media posts, that's liking and sharing and seeing the information. So really good to see that that channel of communication is um, working well for us.